And now I give the floor to uh, uh, the Earl of Dartmouth on behalf of Eve Didi. Uh, yes, sir. Um, thank you, Mr. President. First of all, some basic facts. First, China has been dumping steel. The European Steel Association, Eurofur, set this out in a statement in October 2015. Second, in the United States, there are whole communities, indeed large towns, whose industry has been hollowed out, indeed devastated, by competition. Competition that has been likely unfair. Third, when running for election, the President of the United States made promises. These promises included tariffs. Now, we as a party favour free trade. Indeed, one compelling reason for Brexit is that the European Union is itself protectionist, despite what Mr. Weber said. And before somebody blue cards me, that is what the customs union is. There is an external tariff wall. And to give just one example, the EU imposes duties on agricultural goods that can be up to 67%. Now, of course, we would prefer it if the President of the United States did not introduce new tariffs. Nevertheless, it's important to understand the reasons. Now, if I may make a suggestion to the EU national governments, the United States would be much more likely to take note of what continental European governments want on tariffs if those same European governments would spend the 2% of gross domestic product on security, that is, their that is their obligation. Now that would be better for a peaceful world than the large EU tariff walls. The next speaker is Mrs. James. Good morning, Chamber. Well, insulting world leaders, be it Trump or even Prime Minister May, uh, appears to have become the norm. But let me just remind you of some key facts here before we start throwing uh, bats and whatever at the USA. The European Union is the largest uh, protectionist uh, trade bloc in the world. 17 billion euros a year charged to exporters via the common external tariff. Even the Commission admits to 5,000 non-tariff barriers. And then we have all of the red tape and the regulation, which equally acts as a tariff barrier or a barrier to trade in some contexts. Therefore, to keep on criticising Mr. Trump and the USA because of his trade policy is not going to be in the least bit helpful because he's going to be able to come back and say, what about in your own backyard? Why don't you sort out your own trade policy in the first instance? Diplomacy is going to be absolutely pivotal here. We don't need revenge, we don't need retaliation, and we don't need penalty. And just remember how important the USA market is for European member state countries. Time is over, please. Thank you. And now... Mrs. Bay, on behalf of ENF. Well, yes. We're going to have to deal with it. President Trump uh, keeps the promises he made as a candidate. They had a record trade deficit uh, last year, about $600 billion, and so they are imposing strong measures to protect their economy, and particularly their steel and aluminium sector. Uh, President Trump announced this uh, counterattack in uh, Da Nang in Vietnam uh, during a speech that uh, I attended. And uh, he's uh, talking about uh, threats. Now, what we're hearing uh, from uh, those who usually preach free trade, such as Mr. Moscovici, they say that protectionism is nationalism and nationalism equals war. That's what they say. But. Uh, I mean, we are just hearing uh, the same old uh, formula that tried from our ministers of uh, finance. I mean, we're seeing the failure of this uh, trade. Uh, we're seeing the failure on our continent. We, we've seen industrialization uh, uh, be lost on our continent, jobs lost. Uh, we're always talking, talking, talking about uh, the metal sector, but we're seeing factories in uh, Florange and, el and elsewhere being closed down, and uh, we face this prospect of even further job losses within the next uh, decade. I mean, all big economies protect uh, their uh, exports, their products. Uh, 
we see, for example, that uh, Chinese Im import. Uh, Chinese products, uh, cars, for example, in the U.S. only get uh, tariff theft on about 2.5 percent, whereas China protects their market at much higher rates. We'll need this type of protection. Uh, with this measure from uh, President Trump, we also see the Commission uh, launch a new uh, action plan on uh, global warming, but uh, this is all that goes head to head with their sort of free trade agenda at the same time. We need coherent policies, we need to re repatriation uh, of uh, jobs, of production, and therefore uh, I think that, uh, you know, we see some uh, billionaires uh, protecting their middle classes in their own country, and that's perfectly legitimate. We need to put an end to a system where people are systematically impoverished. Uh, um, and people are only growing richer. The rich in poor countries are growing richer. So what we need is we need some uh, uh, protection because that is the only way we can have balanced trade internationally. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now Mr. Borghezio. Thank you, President. I think it's quite amazing to see the, the response to these uh, Trump uh, uh, levies. We know that's part of the Davos uh, super uh, lobby. I'm also amazed to see that the communist group has become uh, a trade lobby of us, or a free trade lobby. And let's not forget that ultimately this is all the fault of Mrs. Merkel and the Germans uh, with their export, their trade exports of 237 billion do uh, euros. So what we see is that this trade policy is leading to both wars and poverty. Germany has built up an enormous trade surplus. Uh, thanks to its hyper-competitive exports based on low wages and the low euro-dollar exchange rate. So, rather than attacking Trump, Germany should be trying to reduce its own trade surplus. We have in introduced a safeguard procedure on steel and aluminium imports so as to protect... Uh, or he's done that to protect US companies from imports from China, India and other countries. Uh, so clearly, however, American producers will diversify their sources of supply by buying the European market. But you don't want to talk about what's going on in Bracco. We've had enough of hearing about these transfers of production, the production being taken away from our workers. Let's bring a stop to this. Now, uh, the uh, Liberal and Mrs. Schrake. Thank you, President, Commissioners and colleagues. Trade rules and negotiations are complex. We saw this during years of negotiating TTIP, negotiations that are stalled after dramatic change in the American approach. And normally trade arrangements are certainly not the kind of topic to be shaped in a number of angry tweets one morning. Tweets that send stock markets plum pumbling, sorry, plumbing uh, and Gary Cohen resigning. We condemn the harsh accusations in the EU's direction and frankly, are puzzled by what we see. And adding insult to injury, the President's tweets now also speculate to impose tariffs on European cars and other accusations. And for a country that exports so many German cars, this is at least a bad business proposition. Many jobs are created in the US by European companies and vice versa. We don't live in a zero-sum world, but we're actually mutually dependent. Now, senior officials have suggested national security is the reason to impose broad steel and aluminum tariffs also on Europe, and as allies, we believe these arguments are misguided and not justified. The same goes for the notion that individual member states may negotiate exemptions. American hints at undermining the EU, as well as British hints at being open to special treatments, can only be read as being made in bad faith and must be challenged where the British government will find out soon, if necessary, what the benefits of a common approach globally in the EU are, or were in their case. For decades, the US and the EU have worked together to craft a rules-based system, rules for human rights, war and peace, and also trade. Now, does that mean that the system or the WTO is perfect? Not at all. But does history suggest our citizens benefit from shaping globalization from being rule makers instead of rule takers? Absolutely. And that is precisely what makes the sound bites of the current US administration so disturbing. Right at the time, we need to work together as the liberal democracies of this world.
to curb unfair trade practices of China and others, we are divided. As Vice President of the Transatlantic Legislators Dialogue, I look to members of Congress in particular for their leadership and solid affirmation of the transatlantic relation. We do not need a trade war and will do what we can to stop it. And Commission, you have my group's full support as well. But we are ready to adapt proportionate and WTO compliant countermeasures when it's necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Mr. Starbatty. President. President. Trump, Trump wants to make his country great, but he's making it small. Trying to protect industries that are shrinking because of the strong competition globally. So he's basically making his country uncompetitive. He was talking about how many jobs would depend on steel and what would happen if steel became more expensive. And however proportionate we are in the measures we take, we won't achieve anything. You know, he's a spoilt brat, basically. He's just going to want more. We're gonna, we need a different strategy. Bringing down tariffs. Why have 10% on customs duties on imports from, of cars from the US? Bring them down. You know, that would be a sign. Let's do the right thing. Cheaper imports increase competition. Let's, make, let's take advantage of that. Thank you very much. Mr. Starbatty, will you accept a blue card question from Mr. Kaspari? Go ahead, Mr. Kaspari. Thank you very much. And now, Mrs. Hirsch. Dear President, the transatlantic relationship is much more than steel, peanut butter, and orange juice. It's a profound strategic, political, and economic bond built by brave leaders and visionaries. Currently, you are neither behaving like a leader nor a visionary. The truth is that you won't bring back jobs to the U.S. steel and aluminum sector in any significant numbers. Your confrontational actions, if not stopped, will only cost more jobs on both sides of the Atlantic. Let's still be honest, not the European Union is treating the U.S. badly. For most unfair trade practices, China is to blame. Where the EU is resorting to unfair practices, we could have worked it out with TTIP. But it was you who stopped the negotiations. You are responsible that we still have different tariffs on cars, and you are responsible that we have seen always no progress in the recent years. Dear Mr. President, if you are ready to become a world leader in tackling unfair trade methods, you will have for, to look for allies, and you might find them here. Mr. Trump, I'm a member of the European Parliament working every day for prosperous trade relations between our two continents. And by the way, you can't fire me for doing that. Thank you so much. Mr. Butikoffer, you have the floor. We are all empowered. We are all outraged by President Trump's behavior. Yet again, I would add, some indignant voices have actually maintained that Donald Trump is turning the US into a rogue state. Be that as it may, it could be different, but things are what they are. I would say, let's not just get caught up in uh, impotent anger. We should view this as an opening gambit. Donald Trump does believe that world trade should be a zero-sum game. He wants to see a world trade order which breaks with the past. He wants we to see a world trade order in which the US decides and the rules would then be tailored on the basis of US interests. The lack of consideration which characterized, it characterizes his behavior at the moment should actually trigger off greater unity and determination on our part. However, those measures aren't directed at us. The real destination is China. The US, uh, Trump in his own inimitable spile is living out an old Chinese saying, who would kill chickens to frighten apes? 
and we are the chickens in this game. I think we should do our utmost to avoid a trade war while at the same time strongly defending European interests. That's a very difficult balancing act. To do that, we have to take this case to the WTO arbitration panel as provided for by the Commission. At the same time, we also have to send us a clear signal that we won't just uh, turn the other cheek with the US. Commissioners, uh, and indeed the whole of the Commission, what we need now is genuine united support from all member states for your proposal. If the US succeeds in differentiating between different industrial sectors and countries in Europe, they will succeed in dividing us, and we should avoid that. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much, sir. And the next speaker is Mr. Le Yarrick. It's clear that uh, Mr. Trump's decision is uh, a declaration of war against the steel and aluminium sectors of uh, the EU. They threaten thousands of jobs and uh, the livelihoods of villages and cities. Uh, and this type of uh, protectionism is combined with lowering of corporate tax rates and to the uh, fluctuation of the dollar rate as well. And this is going to lead to inflation, which uh, are types of uh, taxes, and they feed, they fuel the uh, financial markets. This type of uh, trade war is very dangerous for uh, workers on both sides of the Atlantic and for the world indeed. We need to protect workers on both sides of the Atlantic and therefore we need to launch uh, safeguard measures to protect jobs and industries here in the EU. But at the same time we need a new trade partnership uh, uh, with a, a joint EU stance and we need to do this uh, for all of humanity and we need to do this through a new international monetary system as well. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, the next speaker is Mrs. Begin. Grazie, Presidente. Thank you, President. Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen. Because we believe in trade, we are convinced that tariffs can be an important instrument when acting against countries which don't respect the rules. In this case, however, trunk tariffs on aluminium and steel will also apply to those countries which have always scrupulously respected the rules, including the European Union, which produces steel without offering unfair competition to the Americans. These are not tariffs designed to actually protect the American economy. They're actually designed to obtain something else. The U.S. have made it clear that if other countries invest more in NATO and military spending, uh, buying F-35s or other U.S. arms, uh, or indeed accepting U.S. quality food by accepting GMOs, hormone-treated beef, chlorine chicken and so on. So, Commissioner, international trade should be encouraged when it brings pr prosperity and limited when it damages the economy. Never, however, should international trade be used as an excuse for getting something else. We should not give in to the blackmail of the U.S. based on the precautionary principle. At the same time, we should at any cost avoid any further escalation towards a trade war, which ultimately would damage all our consumers, citizens and producers. Europe has to find alternative solutions to make it clear to our allies that we remain to be just that, their allies, but that we will not give in to their blackmail. Thank you. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Mr. Lones. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, President. Let's be honest with each other. Increasingly, America is choosing to defend its own interests. America first. And we've seen the effect of this on an old ally. We've seen the effects in the Middle East, and increasingly expects Europe to solve its own problems. When it comes to the whole debate on defence and NATO. America clearly believes that we have to invest more ourselves. We see this as well in uh, free trade talks uh, uh, in the Atlantic zone. Things aren't getting easier. TTIP has been done away with. And we're talking now about tariffs and the imports of aluminum and steel. Let's be clear. There's nothing new about this. We saw this trend emerging under Obama, and it's picking up speed under Trump. So I'd l like to suggest that, above all, we look to ourselves. We shouldn't fall into the trap of overreacting. On the contrary. So let's take up the fight with uh, determination and self-confidence. We 
opt for go, the opposite of trade war. We want to defend free trade because it's in the interest of our companies, our jobs, our citizens. And a trade war with the USA won't make either Europe or the United States great again. It will make all of us smaller. Now, Mr. Carthy. Thank you, Chair. Donald Trump does not care about lower income workers, their jobs, their wages or their rights. And we know this from his actions in providing tax breaks for the richest, his regular attacks on vital services such as health care. But he was elected because he exploited the genuine concerns of many working people in the United States, people who haven't received the benefits of free trade and globalization, who in fact have lost their jobs and their faith in politics. Trump's latest actions in imposing trade tariffs must be seen in this context. However, the European Commission is playing in to his game. By promoting a dangerous trade agenda through deals such as CETA and Mercosur, the EU will actually increase the alienation and distrust that has already surged in many member states. Any honest observer will attest that this agenda is, rather than enriching everyone, actually exacerbating the race to the bottom on global labour rights and standards. If we want to respond effectively to Trumpism, then we need to abandon a trade agenda that will only widen inequalities in Europe and across the globe. Thank you very much, sir. And now, Mr. Proust. Um, Madam Commissioner, may I ask you a question? All your meetings between the EU and the US administration, are they going to get anywhere with Donald Trump? Of course, I'm not questioning you personally, but the reason I ask is that I think that it seems that his television set seems to be his closest advisor and his closest friend, Twitter. Think about two centuries of history. Tr President of the US using Twitter to announce important political decisions. If we want to have common objectives, we should ensure that he's not twisting our arm, tweeting to, he to have his voice heard. We can ask for a trade war. Uh, these are all ridiculous, risky ventures. So Donald Trump is playing the guy, instead of the one with the button, the higher, the biggest nuclear button, the one with the uh, biggest tariffs in terms of customs tariffs. And there's one piece of advice I would give to him. He, make, he carries out miracles, like Moses. He takes everything, he pushes everything out of his way, including good sense, common sense. Julio Winkler. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, the decision of President uh, Trump was a bitter surprise for our group, for the EPP, who supports uh, uh, fair uh, trade uh, for people. We know that protectionism is never an answer, but create more problems. A trade war has no winners, only losers. American citizens, those who supported Trump, will lose. The American industries and European industries will lose. Eastern countries, among which Romania, my own country, will um, suffer greatly. Uh, main uh, steel producers, Russia, Ukraine, uh, Turkey, are our neighbors, and uh, they will turn their exports towards us. Therefore, we ask the European Commission to uh, find a quick uh, answer, um, uh, firm uh, and appropriate and proportionate, in order to protect European industries and to avoid a trade war that uh, would be very dear to us all and would be detrimental to our citizens' um, welfare. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to Mrs. De Lange. President, Commissioners, I would like to tell you about the town of Imauden on the North Sea in the Netherlands. More than a thousand, of pe thousand people in that city uh, help produce seven million tons of steel. These are the people we're talking about here. The difference between those who are right and those who want to be right. Obviously, we're right. Nobody can explain to us that EU steel and aluminium used in vehicles and cans in the US is a threat for national security. However, as to whether we'll be right or be accepted as being right, that's a different question. Clearly, we've heard a lot today about compliance with international rules. 
if you took at the shoe collection of his daughter Ivanka, you'll probably find that lots of those produced are stamped made in China. That shows the hypocrisy of the Trump family. However, despite that, we have to adapt in a united way. Clearly, any action has to be proportionate. Nobody gains from escalation, but we have to be clear. Two things. First, in the short term, we need uh, uh, measures to prevent our markets being flooded with cheap imports. And in the longer term, we have to address the question of overproduction and dumping from China. Not so as to show that we're right, but to prevent the people in Imaden and elsewhere in Europe paying the price for this. Yes, please. The floor is yours, Mr. Katainen. Thank you very much, Mr. President, honourable members. Thank you very much for this House's very strong support to the policy what the Commission has adopted in this file. It's very important that the whole EU is united when addressing this kind of uh, trade issues and difficulties. We also acknowledge in the Commission the good cooperation with the Congress of the, of the United States. Both main parties, Republicans and Democrats, share the view on rules-based word order and rules-based trade with us. It's a, uh, we have to acknowledge this good cooperation. Also, the business sector in the, in the United States shares the views of ours. So we have to acknowledge this. This is not a dispute between Europe and the United States as such. So that's why Commission will concentrate on problem solving instead of provoking further problems in, the, in, in this file. So what we want to do is to clear up this mess. I think there are good reasons which both sides uh, will at the end of the day accept that we don't need, we don't want a trade war. Instead we should concentrate on improving our trading conditions between the two trading blocks, like-minded uh, continents. Honourable members, it's also th th this incident is a good reminder for all of us. When we want to build or harness the globalisation, it must be based on rules-based world order instead of rule of the strongest. Trade agreements are good examples of building rules-based world order. Actually, the reality is as simple as this. We have to choose between the two options. Either we want to have trade agreements which brings values to trade, which strengthens, uh, strengthen the rules-based world order, or then we are in a situation where we are at the moment, where arbitrary uh, decisions can harm all of us. So, honourable members, we try to find a solution as, so as soon as possible and we want to enhance our trading and security cooperation with the United States. Thank you very much.